welcome. Today is a special day for fountain pen lovers and ink lovers and people who love to write by hand because it's National Handwriting Day. And I wanted to celebrate with using some of my new Ferris wheel press inks. Today I want to talk about Cabernet on the Lake. I did make a video of this ink with two other inks, but I wanted to specifically focus on this one today and sort of explore the possibilities of this ink. So I have my, um, I have a brand new ink notebook that I've only done one, one pen test in so far. I've got a glass nib dip pen. I've got a Kakimori um, stainless steel nib, which I have a video on Kakimori nibs. You can check that out if you'd like. I have a paintbrush, I have a shot glass. I have a little cake of Sumi ink because I like to test the ink with either watercolor or Sumi because I often use these beautiful inks um, creatively in my artwork. And I have a glass of water and a paper towel to try. So this um, notebook, this is just a new one. I've had this one for a while. This is a Midori um, B6 Slim. Um, I have the grid and I just finished one, so I just started a new one. And this is just the paper cover. It's getting a little worn, but um, it's wonderful. So I'm actually gonna take it out of the cover for this. And the only thing I've put in here, I see I started this one in January 24, and the only thing I have put in here is, um, I call it taking my pens for a walk. And once a week I write um, with every one of my pens that is inked. You know, the thing is, I, last year, I did not have a lot of pens inked at one time, but I just, I, I was recovering from some surgery. I had a lot of downtime and I was playing with my inks and my pens a lot. And so I have a lot of pens inked right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 pens inked right now. Um, and that will not stay that way. I'm sure next month um, I'll use some of them up. I write a lot. I probably write, I mean, I write, I write all day with fountain pens. I mean, four or 5,000 words a day in total, right? I, mean, I, I write a lot because I'm, I, I work by hand on first drafts and I do everything with fountain pens. So I write a lot. So anyways, I will use some of these up and they will not be re-inked. Um, this is just too many. I mean, usually one page is, is about right. But today is National Handwriting today, Day. So, you know, it's, um, who cares how many pens we have inked today? So I wanna start by just taking a look at this beautiful packaging and this ink in, in its bottle. So this one is, again, it's by Ferrisville Press. Their packaging is bar none my favorite. It's so beautiful. Fall in love with writing again. I love that. This is sparkling ink compatible with all fountain pens and dip pens. And it's 38 milliliters of ink and the packaging is gorgeous. And then once you open it up, you get this gorgeous glass bottle. Here, this is Cabernet on the Lake. And then their beautiful logo. These, these, these bottles feel substantial. They feel like decorative things for your home, right? They're really, really beautiful. My only complaint about this brand are the bottles. Now they make another bottle that's a little round bottle, um, like a little a little sphere. Those are a little bit more stable, but they're still hard to get your pen into. I'll show you what I mean in a second and, and what I do um, to make that better for myself. Because if, in the end, you can work around it. But if there were any change that I would make to this brown, there's only one, and that is that the bottles would be not so tippy and that the tops had bigger openings in them. So I didn't have to decant it. So what I end up doing, it's, it's actually um, pretty simple, is I do mix up the ink, and then I grab, if I'm filling a pen, I use a syringe, a, a syringe to fill a cartridge, um, or a cartridge converter, but if I'm, um, I'm using a dip pen, or I'm using it for artwork, I decant it into a shot glass, and 
with a eyedropper and it works really well. So you just want to make sure you you integrate the shimmer into the ink. And you know, you don't want to ever shake a fountain pen ink. Oh, that's good. You don't ever want to shake it really hard because that's just going to get air bubbles in your ink and you're not going to like that. So I'm going down to the bottom. I'm making sure I get shimmer in there. And I'm just going to put two eyedroppers full in my shot glass. Now, I can pour this back into the bottle. It's not a waste, you know. Um, so that's not a problem. But for when I'm working, I, I find two, two eyedropper fulls is enough. And then I can always put it back into the bottle. Now, when I do this and I'm using a paintbrush, I always want to make sure that my paintbrush is completely clean and and dry it off really well before I stick it back into the ink because I, I don't want to contaminate it. All right, that's super important also. So let's start um, let's start by making a swatch with this lovely ink and I'm going to use my paintbrush for that. So I wet the paintbrush and then I, I'm drying it off really well on a paper towel so it's not dripping water. And then when it's in a shot glass, it's so great because I can just stir it up. So I make sure I get all that glitter in there. If it's a shimmer ink. And I'm going to make a beautiful swatch. So I usually just use a ton of ink, right? And let it just settle where it settles. I want to flood the paper. I mean, not ridiculously, but to flood the paper with ink is going to give you a really good idea of the saturation, if it sheens, if it sparkles, all of those things. Um, it's not going to show you what it looks like when you use it in a pen, right? But for artworks, um, this is exactly what I want to do. I'm going to use watercolor paper in a little while. So I am just going to clean my brush off for now in my water and, and dry it really well. And that will just sit there in waiting um, for the watercolor test later. So I'm going to start with my Kakimori nib. Now Kakimori nibs are super special. This one is made of stainless steel. It writes a little bit finer. I also have one made of brass. I would like to get their glass pen also, but I just have not yet. The benefit of a Kakimori nib are these channels that are built into the nib. It looks like a little bullet. And when you dip the nib into ink, look, I have ink all over my fingers, typical, right? Um, it, these channels fill up and you can write for a very long time. So I can just swirl my nib in my shot glass, all right? And then I'm going to write the name of this ink. So this is Ferris Wheel. Press all right. Um, this ink is called Cabernet. See, I didn't write, I didn't, we'll just do that. I didn't um, wipe it off after I dipped it. You have to do that with um, these pens Cabernet on. The lake. All right, so these pens with a more fluid ink like this, a dye-based ink, are going to write a little thicker. When you use a pigmented ink, which is a little thicker of an ink, not so viscous, um, it writes thinner, all right? So just keep that in mind. You can touch, after you dip it, you can touch it into something to um, remove some of the ink. But I'm just gonna rinse this one off and switch to my glass nib so you can see the difference. I love my Kakimori nibs. I use them a lot in artwork for masking fluid as well. All right, so I'm gonna stir up the ink with my pen and I just sort of wipe it off. With a glass nib, it's not as critical. This, now this gloss nib has a broad tip because I use it for testing inks and I want to see the properties of the ink. If I use a really fine nib, I don't see that as much. Yeah. 
this ink is so it reminds me a little bit of dominant industry um Romania red, which does not have any shimmer, but it's that really deep crimson, you know? Um, it is like a deep red wine, for sure. It's stunning. So as the ink sort of um, comes off of the nib, um, let me see here. It is not as dark. Right? Yeah, it's just, it's stunning. So this is still wet. I don't want to tip it too much, but you can, you can really see the shimmer in this ink. And what it does is you've got the deep dark red of the ink, and then you've got this bright like rose gold um, shimmer that comes out. And it just it just lights it up a little bit on the page. It's really beautiful to look at. And for me, I mean, I love sending letters with, with sparkly ink to people. It's fun for them to receive. But the real beauty is those everyday moments where you can take a moment to do something that just lights you up, right? It is just a pleasant experience. And I... Um, the, maybe the greatest lover of sparkle on earth. <laughs> so it's always fun for me. I'm going to do a little bit more here. Okay, I'm going to touch this to there so it's not so saturated. And I'm going to try printing. This nib is so smooth. just to see the shading. So when I write with this in printing, like tilted up like this, it's almost like a medium nib. This is bolder, and then it becomes like a medium nib. So you can kind of see what that might look like. It is super beautiful. And what I really love about it, when you write with it, it's not flashy. It's very subtle. It's very rich. It's like velvet, you know? It's super gorgeous. Okay, now. Yeah, very beautiful. So let's just see what happens as far as dry time. Now this is Midori MD paper, so it's mid-range, right? It's not like Tomoe River paper that takes forever to dry, but it's not a quick dry paper either. Although this is drying pretty quickly. So, um, five seconds. Ten. And twenty. So at twenty it's almost dry and for if like a deep, rich, saturated, sparkling ink, that's pretty good. So I don't get overly technical with my writing samples. I just want to see what it looks like on my paper of choice, right? Midori MD is my paper of choice. All of my notebooks are Midori. I do use um, Hobonichi for my planner, but I don't typically use fountain pen in that. I use a Pilot Friction because, uh, because I erase a lot, so I'm not going to be using a fountain pen there. Um, and plus it's Tomoe River paper, and it just takes too long to dry. So I am, I am smitten with this ink, I really am. Well, let's let this dry, and I'm gonna go grab a piece of watercolor paper to just see what happens when we use it in an artistic way. Okay, so let me just get my brush wet, and then I'm gonna put it straight onto the paper.
So when you start to mass it out like this, it almost becomes like a quinacridone pigment. I'm not sure. I believe these are all dye-based. So that basically means, um, if I just drop water into it, what happens? So when they're all dye based, it just means that they're not going to be very light fast, right? They're not going to, they're not going to be, you know, if they're if they're framed in in sunlight for a hundred years, they're going to fade a little bit. That's okay. Um, we, you know, we we can't really ethically sell an artwork um, using fugitive things, dye based things, unless we tell someone. If we say, look, this is beautiful, you can get so many gorgeous results with dye-based products, but you just have to be honest about it. You just have to say this has a dye-based ink in it, and it may not last 100 years, right? So um, that's fine. But the other thing to consider is that, that sometimes we're making art for joy, and, and it's it doesn't matter at all. Or you're making art for reproduction, or you're making art in your sketchbook, which is close to light, and it will stand a fairly long test of time, right? So there, there are, I, I used to worry more about, um, about light fastness, but these days I really don't. And if I do happen to make something, you know, beautiful that maybe someone wants to purchase from me, I just say, look, yeah, you can buy it, but it's, it's, it, there's fugitive inks in it, right? Or fugitive watercolors, because even watercolors can be fugitive. So that is, <laughs> that is really stunning. So now I'm just going to take some water and put some water down on the paper and take a little bit of the ink and start at the top and just drop it in and see how it moves. And it, it, we did this before. It moves fairly well, um, not as intensely as some pigments do. But what I really love is how the, the sparkle particles kind of flocculate together and make this beautiful um, flocculation. Basically, the pigments gather together. I'm just going to wipe this up. I don't want to want my paper. That is really, really pretty. Okay. It's good to see, right, how things react. This is just playtime. Now I'm going to try it with some Sumi ink. And I'm going to start, I use Sumi ink a lot, and I particularly love to use it with these types of fountain pen inks for more expressive, um, intuitive work. And so if I start, I, my, my water is so tinted. If I start with Sumi, really, really clean that brush well and wipe it really, really, really well. And then grab some of my ink and see how they play together. always a surprise. Sometimes things do really magical. They have really magical effects and you just never know until you try it. This one seems pretty average, beautiful, but average. Like it's not doing crazy things. Sometimes they do crazy things, but it's beautiful nonetheless, right? How I would use this, if I were doing a Sumi painting, I might do just a little bit of the painting with a fountain pen ink. Just put a little spark of color in it. So it's very monochromatic and subtle and elegant. And then this little spark of color. And these deep, rich, saturated inks with a little bit of shimmer in them, just, I don't know, it's sumptuous when you do it together. So let me see here. And then I'll just tip my brush in water. I just kind of like to see the 
the effects. That's drying pretty quickly on the watercolor paper, to be honest with you. That's drying really quickly, actually. That's nice. Um, beautiful, smooth application. I can see where you could get some gorgeous, like, what I'm envisioning is like a rose window or a mandala where you get almost stained glass effects from these. Uh, from, from especially from this color, but from these inks in particular. That might be a really fun project to do. And you can also do it on translucent yuppo paper, which ends up giving you amazing, um, like sort of transparent, luminous results. All right, let's let this dry too, and then we'll come back and take a look at everything. So I also just tried uh, painting with it to see if I could get variations and tones and things. And like most dye-based ink, it's a little bit tricky, but beautiful nonetheless. That sparkle is just stunning. Very, very pretty. So let's take a look at our swatch now, which is dry. And it is really gorgeous. I love where the ink pooled here and the shimmer pooled and you've got some flocculation there. The writing itself is stunning. Um, when you when light hits it just right, you're gonna see a lot of sparkle. But when you're just writing along, it is very subtle, which is what I prefer. Really, really, really beautiful. Yeah, this is a good one. And then here we have our watercolor paper samples and I'm very happy with it. I think it would be a nice addition to um, an abstract painting. 
especially with Sumi or other watercolors, um, just a little pop. And I love to be able to do that with my fountain pen inks. They're, it makes them very diverse. All right, everyone. So that is Ferris Wheel Press Cabernet on the Lake. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous shimmer ink. I think for all seasons, really, I could see it. I can see it being a beautiful summer ink or autumn, winter, winter berries in a watercolor painting. They'd really pop. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, just ask, and I will leave a little bit more information in the description box below. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye.